These are the odd numbered level four problems. An airplane starts from rest and accelerates to 90 meters per second before leaving the ground. If the runway was 1,350 meters, how much time did the plane take to accelerate? So it's starting from rest, so that means its starting velocity is zero. And its final velocity is 90 meters per second. And the runway is 1,350 meters. And we want to know the time that this took. So this is the first time in the P1s anyway we're going to be using this equation. This is the only one that connects all four of these and I want to isolate t. So if I multiply by the denominator and divide by the numerator, so I just need to plug in my values and solve. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get 30 seconds. Problem 21, a car accelerates at a constant rate from 15 meters per second to 25 meters per second while it travels 125 meters. How long does this motion take? Okay, so again, we're gonna be using that last equation. I can see even before making the SUVA table that there's no acceleration involved. So S is the displacement, 125 meters. U is the starting velocity. V is the final velocity. And we're looking for the time. So we have S, U, V, and T, so we're gonna be using that equation. And because I just solved this in number 19, I'm just gonna write out T as I solved it in that previous problem. And when I plug this into my calculator, I get 25 seconds. The meters cancel out and I'm left with one over one over seconds, which is just seconds. Number 23, while cruising along a dark stretch of highway at 30 meters per second, you see at the fringes of your headlights some roadkill on the highway. It takes you 0.5 seconds to react. Then you apply the brakes and come to a stop 3.5 seconds later. Determine the total displacement of the car from when the roadkill first came into the road and when the car stopped. So this is the first situation where there are two different accelerations. So we're gonna to have to make two different kinematics tables. I'm gonna separate them out right here. In the first section, you haven't reacted yet. You're just going at this constant rate. And in the second situation, You're hitting your brakes and slowing to a stop. We'll just add like a skid mark just to make that clear. So I'm going to make a SUVA table for both and we'll see if we can figure this out. So this says it takes you 0.5 seconds to react. So that's how long you're gonna travel before reacting. So that's gonna be 0 0.5 seconds. And you're moving at 30 meters per second.
And because you haven't reacted yet, you haven't hit your brakes, so you're just consistently moving at that rate, so you're not going to have an acceleration. So I'll need to solve for the displacement in this first part, but I'll do that in just a minute. So in the second part over here, I'm going to have a different SUVA table. You need one table for every acceleration because the equations only work when there's one constant acceleration. So after you apply the brakes, you come to a stop in 3.5 seconds. So the second part is going to take 3.5 seconds. And you're starting off with 30 meters per second of velocity. And the final velocity is zero because you're coming to a stop. And again, here you're trying to find the displacement. I'll call this one S1 and this one S2. So the big goal of the problem really is to get S1 plus S2. So for this one, I have S, U, A, and T. So I'm gonna write out the SUVAT equation that connects them. So I have S already solved for, and you'll also notice that because A is zero, this entire section of the equation is not going to matter. So this is actually a throwback to the previous unit where we were talking about constant velocity. Because if you have zero acceleration, that means that you have constant velocity. So this equation for displacement, velocity times time, works because, again, this only works when you have a constant velocity. And because there's no acceleration, we do have a constant velocity. So the displacement here is going to be that 30 meters per second times 0.5 seconds, which is equal to 15 meters. So that's S1. And for S2, I need an equation that connects S, U, V, and T, and no A. So that's going to be this equation. So it looks like I actually made a mistake with this answer. So when I calculate this out, S2 is going to be equal to 52.5 meters. So the total displacement that you traveled is going to be 15 plus 52.5, which is going to be 67.5 meters.